All right, so this is in preparation for the anniversary of the Titanic sinking from April 14th to April 15th. Uh, this is the kind of a history project, if you want to call it. Essentially, how it sank, what was the build-up to it, what were the big mistakes that they made. So, in the early 1900s, the Translantic um, kind of business was both profitable and competitive. And two of the main companies for this were White Star and the Cunard. In 1907, the Cunard released the debut of two new ships, who were known well for their speed, the, Lu the Lusiana and the Marietana, both later set speed records going across the Atlantic. To Ansel's rival, sorry, rival, White Star chairman J. Bruce Ismay met with William Perrier, who was in charge of most of White Star's vessels. They decided to build three ships, but built for comfort instead of speed. The Olympic, the Britannic, and the Titanic. Needless to say, when the Titanic was finished, it looked absolutely stunning. Um, its first class accommodations were known to be better than the most ship, or the yeah, second class accommodations were known to be better than most ships' first class accommodations. So you know it was great. You could actually have it organized to have kind of a, a room service. Uh, it had a grand staircase. Um, you could even get people to uh, polish your shoes um, at a small fee. There was a gym for the first class uh, passengers, which included a, a fake horse and camel. It had first class dining saloon, four elevators, and a swimming pool. So... You know, it, it was it was stunning. For safety, the Titanic had 16 compartments that included doors in case the hull was breached. The bulkheads weren't capped so they could overflow, but the builder said four of these compartments could flood over but still be fine. This led many to believe the Titanic couldn't possibly s sink. The Titanic, when it was built, needless to say, was one of the largest ships ever at the time, and even now. Uh, fully laden with all of its supplies, it weighed f uh, roughly 52,000 tons, and it was roughly 882.5 feet long and roughly 92.5 feet wide. On April 10, 1912, it set sail from Southampton, England, to New York. But right off the start, the Titanic had issues. Suction from it nearly caused them to run into the docked New York ship. And it took an hour of maneuvering to prevent a crash. What? So that was how the Titanic was built. Next, we're going to move on to what exactly happened to lead to the Titanic actually crashing. So the first problem was the captain, Mr. Smith, uh, kept up the speed of the ship, which was a, which was a large amount, 22 knots. Did despite being warned that there were icebergs around. The Mesa Ba, another ship, sent out sent out word that it was an ice field, but the message never reached the Titanic. In hour, uh, an hour 15 minutes later, the Californian ship, near, which was nearby, sent word that it had stopped due to ice. Now remember this, because this is important at the end. The person handling pa uh, passenger messages, called Philip, scolded the Californian for interrupting him during his passenger messages. So, and as well, the two lookouts, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, found it harder to see icebergs, both because uh, their, their binoculars were missing, and the ocean was calm. So... It wasn't breaking at the iceberg base, making it harder to see any icebergs at the time. They eventually spotted an iceberg, but it was a little it was closer, significantly closer than it would have liked. First officer William Murdoch ordered a turn left and the engines were reversed. Called I think it was a starboard maneuver. And the ship turned, but it was way too close that it uh, that a collision was unavoidable unavoidable. It ran, the iceberg ran into the hull, the starboard of the ship. And 
and the many of the supposed watertight compartments ruptured. Its bow was sinking, and it was determined that the Titanic would sink. Many, many experts and scientists believe that if uh, First Officer Murdoch hadn't reversed the engines, the Titanic could have handled a full-on collision with the iceberg and would have survived. Because the ship actually turned slower due to the fact that its engines had been reversed. The ship immediately sent distress signals out, and at least three ships responded. But the closest was at least three hours away. A vessel was nearby, but was unable to be contacted, and the Californian, though nearby, had turned off its wireless radio for the night. So they were in real danger here. So, meanwhile, while they tried to contact someone for help, lifeboats were sent out. They only had 20, which, while which was significantly more than what was required by the British Act, uh, was still not nearly enough to save everyone on the ship. It was only enough to save a maximum of 1,178 people, which was which was turned even lower due to the fact that seamen weren't aware the boats had been tested because the mandatory testing had been cancelled. The, the boats had been tested in another area that the shipmen were unaware of, so they didn't know if the ships could hold full capacity. So this led to many, like... Like, Lifeboat 7 only had roughly 27 people in it instead of the maximum of 65. Obviously, women and children were first as well. In the end, only 700 people were rescued by Lifeboat. Or by anything, I guess. Musicians actually played to entertain the people going into the Lifeboats. And many still debate how long the musicians played. Some believe it was right until they sank, but no matter how you determined that uh, the musicians never survived. By the time they got to Lifeboat 14, it was around 1 a.m., uh, roughly an hour and a half after the cra crash, and many passengers were starting to panic. Uh, lots of men, the wi not all the women and children were out, but lots of men started, out of panic, started to attempt to try to get on the lifeboats, leaving officer, fifth officer, sorry, Harold Lau, who, to fire his gun three times. I'm not sure um, if anyone died due to this, but he it, it got dire. It got that dire. One hour later, so roughly 2 a.m., Captain Smith released his crew, saying it was time for every man for himself, for themselves. When the ship sank, hundreds of people fell in the freezing water. However, any survivors in the lifeboats were afraid of being swamped by the giant crash that the Titanic had caused, so they swam away. By the time they got back, many many of the people um, had contributed to the over 1,500 people that died as they succumbed to the freezing water. An hour, roughly an hour after it crashed, so I'm not sure when that would have been, the, well, an hour after the Titanic sank, sorry. The uh, a ship finally arrived to save them. The Carpathia, and they picked up any remaining survivors and then went to New York, which is actually where the Titanic was originally supposed to head in the first place. In the aftermath, there were heroes played by the media. A lot of people think this was actually magnified due to the star power on board. I doubt it, but that's just my opinion based on my research. So there were heroes played up by the media, like Molly Brown, who commanded a lifeboat, and the captain, Henry Roastvan of the Carpathia, who led the way to save everybody in the lifeboats. While others, like Ismay, who was a passenger on board the Titanic, successfully skipped ahead of the women and children and managed to uh, save his own life, but most likely sacrifice someone else's. And so he was deeply criticized. Both the U.S. and the British made an inquiry. In the main inquiry, the U.S. interviewed more than 80 people to find out exactly what happened. It led them to cite that Captain Smith failed to both slow down the ship and warn the passengers, but actually ended up blaming the Californian ship as they 
they said they found out that the Californian had been closer than they had said and had completely ignored distress signals for help. The USA blamed them when the the USA blamed them. When the British main when the British made an inquiry, they said the same thing that the Californian might have saved if not all, might have saved many, if not all, of the lives that we've lost. After this, the rules were changed to what exactly you need to have on a ship. So, a couple of the rules that were changed were that you had to have enough lifeboats for everyone on board. You had to have a 24-hour radio watch due to the fact that the California had turned their radios off, which possibly led to a lot of deaths. If they had been able to respond, they might have saved many more people. And also, lifeboat drills were mandatory, as a lot more people would have been saved if the crewmen had been aware that the lifeboats had actually been tested, and the passengers might have gotten out quicker and easier if they had been trained in what exactly to do. The Californians' ship or response was many of the crew didn't hear the distress signal, which, if you guys didn't know, were actually rockets as well as the radio. But if they had been close, uh, but if they had been as close as the USA and British claimed, it would have definitely hurt it. They also said a third ship, most likely Samson, who was in the area and was accused and I think caught um, illegally smuggling or killing seals was actually closer and could have saved them. As well, people on the Titanic said a vessel was headed in their direction when it was about to sink, but that couldn't have been the Californian, because the Californian, as and I said that this was important earlier on in the, in the lesson, the Californian had stopped for the night due to the icebergs. Many, expert, many experts believe it was actually 20 plus miles, the Californian, sorry, was actually 20 plus miles away and couldn't have possibly gotten to the Titanic in time. Fair or not, Captain Lord of the, Cal of the Californian continued to draw criticism for his decisions in the matter. And um, I, I forgot to say that the exact day they sank was April 15th because it was roughly around midnight when they started to sink. So that's why many people will say it was April 14th slash 15th. Because technically speaking, they started to sink on the 14th and they officially sank on the 15th of 1912. As well, because this is also um, for teak, I, I wanted to find out what wood was used on the Titanic. And according to a study by physitcentral.com, uh, which was exploring whether Jack had to die in the movie Titanic. Uh, it says there were three main types of wood on the ship, which was pine, teak, and oak. Cabins were all framed in both oak and teak. Its decks were partly made of teak. And another, and another, and some more research uh, made me think that this was definitely the right decision to to make the de decks with teak. Because teak is naturally waterproof, but it's also durable. The deck, uh, the uh, a deck made of teak prevents rust on the hull because it can because it has high stability and has tons of natural oils and iron in it, making it hard to deform. It insulates heat, and due to the fact that teak is rich with silicon, which has kind of a sand texture um, texture to it, it's actually harder to slip on than than oak or pine. Also, uh, at the time, it would have been a lot more innovative to have decorative wood instead of more practical wood. And teak, while it's also practical, it's also absolutely stunning to look at. And that would have been a lot more innovative at the time. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this lesson. And um, have a good one. Bye-bye.